It's an exciting time for creatives using Linux. And over the next few years, the amount of people using Linux and incorporating free and open source software into their creative work is gonna expand dramatically. I've been making this switch since earlier this year, and I've learned a lot since that time and continued to learn every day. I wanna give you some tips and tricks and advice to help make your switch a lot easier. For many creatives, the biggest anchor that keeps them in their current workflow isn't necessarily the operating system, although that's part of it. It's the creative tools themselves. And much of the creative world, with, with a few exceptions, incorporate some sort of Adobe into their workflow. Replacing the Adobe tools seems like this insurmountable obstacle for many people. It seems impossible to do. For some people, it will be because they rely on that software for the actual job at a corporation or they freelance that with a corporation and integrate with other people and share projects and things. People in those situations, in that use case, it's very, very, it's going to be very, very difficult to do this kind of switch, but we're not talking about that right now. I'm concentrating on the solo creator, the solo musician, the YouTuber, filmmaker, photographer, artist, and so on. And for the, for that creator, for the solo creator, you can start making the switch today and things are only going to get better from here. Tools are only going to improve. Features are only going to, are only going to improve. Support is only going to improve and so on. So it's a really exciting time, but I still want to try to help make that switch easier for you. Before we get started talking about some of the specific pieces of software that you can use on Linux to create your, your work, I wanna give you a few pieces of advice. Number one is a reality check. There is no one-to-one -one replacement for the Adobe, Adobe Creative Suite. That's just reality. The, the, the features they've spent years building are not gonna re be replaced overnight and are not available right now. I think over the years, we're gonna get really, really close to where the Adobe Creative Suite is now before things completely go more towards AI. But the reality is we're, there's not a one-to-one -one replacement. The tools I suggest will allow you to help create the work you would create from the Adobe uh, Creative Suite, but the path to get there is gonna be much different. There's gonna be some struggles. But So you just have to decide what features you can and can't live without. Number two, it is gonna be frustrating making the switch. You're learning a lot of new things. You're letting go of a lot of comfort in a software you've known for years. So you got to be prepared for that frustration. But what I'm, what I want to do with this video and this whole channel in general is help that be a little easier, make it less frustrating. And this is what we're doing here is building a game plan. The third piece of advice and the biggest piece of advice for this video is prepare to make the switch with the software tools you used to create before you switched operating systems. So if your goal is to go to Linux and start using Linux, uh, free and open source software, as much as you can before you wipe windows or uh, install Linux on your system or get a new computer to run Linux, you can start using these tools I suggest today on your Mac or your Windows PC because all these apps I'm talking about are cross-platform. Research these apps, download them, start utilizing them now and learning them now. Part of that is also knowing your workflow, knowing what these tools are going to be important for you and how you're going to use them and how you're going to chain them together and, and create your own creative stack, so to speak. I don't want to make this video super long, so I'm not going to go into super detail about each of these apps. It's going to be a little bit of just a list, but let's go through replacing the most important Adobe apps that I would utilize or have utilized in a creative workflow or in a creative job or, or whatnot. We'll start with the, their most popular software and one of their oldest pieces of software, Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop can be used for many things for visual arts and visual effects and, and, and photography. So you can do photo editing in Photoshop, you can do design, you can do uh, digital art, a whole bunch of stuff in Photoshop, as you know. Just like a lot of things on this list, there is no complete Photoshop replacement. I'm gonna suggest three tools that will replace different parts of Photoshop and you can combine them together as you see fit. The first one being Krita. Krita is a raster-based photo and digital art application that is really, really powerful. That can replace some of the photo editing and some of the digital art aspects of Photoshop. The second is Inkscape, which Inkscape is a vector-based program, but still, since Photoshop mixes a little bit of vector and raster tools, Inkscape is still something to download and learn and incorporate into almost all your visual workflow, especially graphic design and digital art. And the third app is GIMP. GIMP is one of the oldest pieces of creative free and open source software that I know of. It's making a huge transition from the 2.0 versioning to 3.0 as we speak. 
So keep an eye on GIMP. GIMP is the software that set out to be a Photoshop replacement and has achieved a lot of the really important features, but it's not completely there in and of itself. At least I don't think. I haven't tried 3.0, but that's why you combine these three pieces of software, Krita, Inkscape, and GIMP will hopefully get you a lot of the tools that you relied on in Photoshop. Okay, the second Adobe app we're gonna talk about is Illustrator. Illustrator is a vector design application. I'm a very elementary, still beginner technically of, uh, of Illustrator. I've used it throughout the years, but I've never had a job to dive into it. So I'm I'm basic with my Illustrator skills. So I can't speak to how, much, how many features you'll be missing, but Inkscape is the only software that I know of that can do a really, really good job of getting you close to Illustrator. Inkscape is a fantastic vector-based design programming and they're adding features all the time. Right now they're working on incorporating a CMYK workflow into the software. So it's growing and expanding all the time. And Inkscape is one of the most important and most impressive pieces of software on this whole list. So if you rely on Illustrator, look at Inkscape. InDesign is the next thing on the list. I, InDesign I rarely use, but is, it is important for some of the projects I have coming up. For a lot of people, it's something they use all the time. Just similar to Illustrator, but maybe even more so, I can't speak to the features that you're going to lose specifically by having to replace InDesign. But I can tell you so far, between Inkscape and Scribus, those are the apps that I would look for to replace uh, InDesign for layout and desktop publishing. So look at Inkscape and Scribus for your InDesign desktop publishing needs there. And hopefully those can can get have the key features that you're looking for. For video editing, I've talked about this a handful of times. This is the this is the first part of this list where I'm talking about apps that are proprietary, not free and open source. Because the reality of that is that the reality of free and open source video editing software is that there's in my mind, there's so only one that it, it, that's um, worth spending a lot of time on that's Caden Live. Caden Live is the best free and open source video editing software software that I've tried so far. I've only dabbled in a handful, but it's only taken me a little bit of time to realize that those other choices just don't stack up to Caden Live overall. Some of those other choices do have really cool features here and there, but Caden Live is the king of the free and open source video editing world. So if free and open source is the goal for video editing, Caden Live is it. And they're adding features uh, pretty regularly every year. They're, they're growing it. So I can't wait to see where it is in a year or two. Right now it's really, really close to, to being um, sufficient to replace uh, Premiere to a certain extent. But for me right now, I'm relying on Lightworks. And that's, that's another item on this list. Lightworks and Resolve is the other one. Lightworks and Resolve are proprietary editing systems that are cross-platform, Windows, Mac, and PC. Yes, they're proprietary. Yes, they cost money. I don't count them as free software when both free versions, especially on Linux, are handicapped to a certain pretty heavy, heavy degree. Now, I will say, if your system can run Resolve, the free version of Resolve, and you don't rely on some of the limitations like um, AAC audio and stuff like that, it is worth kicking the tires on and learning, and the same with Lightworks. But to use them in an everyday effective workflow, you need to pay for Resolve and Lightworks to get the most out of them. But there are choices. There are choices, and they're not Adobe, and they run on Linux. So it's, it is nice to have cho choices. You have two solid proprietary video editing choices that are pro professional, that professionals use. And then you have, to, you have a free and open source Caden Live that is as, about as close to professional as any other video editor out there in the free and open source world. Along with Premiere Pro, you have other pieces of software that coincide with it. Nowadays, Media Encoder is tightly integrated with Premiere Pro. Whenever you... Whenever you're video editing, you always have the, the, the clips you shoot, the project you create, and the clip you export. So you have those three stages. Obviously, the video editing software we just talked about takes care of combining and building the cut. But sometimes you need to do some transcoding at the, at the, at the pre-production part before you edit. After you, sh after you shoot, you need to do some transcoding. And obviously, when you're done with the edit, you have to export that edit into a file and then sometimes make different versions of it. In the Adobe world, Media Encoder does this job really well. Whether you send it out of Premiere directly or send it to Media Encoder, Media Encoder is the engine doing that, encoding and transcoding. In the Linux world, just like with some of these other things, you're gonna combine a handful of tools to replace Media Encoder. The key, one of the key pieces of software for this, the, the backbone of it is FFmpeg. FFmpeg is the tool that takes a lot of codecs out there 
and allows you to take one piece of video and turn it into another piece of video or uh, one audio to another audio or even images, one image to another format, image format. It's very flexible, extremely powerful, and it has a lot of codecs in its pocket that it can use. FFmpeg by default is a CLI, command line tool. And it can seem intimidating, but it's really, really not that bad, especially since you can look up a lot of these things. People have FFmpeg uh, recipes, so to speak, to allow you to transcode and to learn how to use it. But there is an app called Shutter Encoder, which I found about a month ago, and I haven't dove too far into it, but I have used it here and there, and so far it's worked great. Shutter Encoder is an interface that someone built for FFmpeg. So it uses the, the power of FFmpeg, but it gives you a more user-friendly GUI to work. So it gives you something that you might feel a little more familiar if you use Media Encoder or if you use like um, Compressor on a Mac. So Shutter Encoder is awesome. It coincides with FFmpeg. You will use, use those a lot as a video editor. The other one is Handbrake. Handbrake is similar to um, Shutter Encoder, but Handbrake doesn't work with all codecs. So you have to just know what what your use case is and what you need to transcode or encode. But Handbrake is another thing on the list. Handbrake has been around for a long time and I've used Handbrake for a handful of things. The next tool we're gonna talk about is Audition. Audition is an audio tool. It's a pretty flexible audio tool. It can You can do multi-track recording, mixing, sound design, effects, a whole bunch of stuff. I don't use Audition that much because, um, well, right now I'm not using Premiere at home but anymore, but the uh, at work, uh, I do almost all, all of my audio sweetening and, and work just in, in Premiere, and then I send it off to get mixed. So I don't use Audition a ton, but I do know that there are some really powerful tools available to help you work with audio. To replace Audition, I would combine these three tools, or look at, at least look at these three tools. Audacity is one. Audacity is a powerful free and open source audio editor. I'm recording my audio through Audacity right now. Ardor is an open source digital audio workstation. It seems extremely powerful. I have not really learned Ardor yet. I will, but I haven't yet, but it seems really powerful. It's something definitely worth looking into. The third one is a proprietary piece of software called Reaper. I'm starting to use Reaper and starting to learn Reaper and Reaper is awesome. It is one of those pieces of software that makes the transition a lot smoother for a lot of people because it gives you comfort to know that Again, just like with Resolve and Lightworks, that there is a professional piece of software to do audio work. There are others out there, but I want to talk about these three and, and, and highlight Reaper right now. So to replace Audition to do audio work for like video or if you're doing podcasting and whatnot, Audacity, Ardor, and Reaper. The next thing we're going to talk about is After Effects. Uh, After Effects seem like the biggest, the, the daunting one for me in my workflow and how to replace that because I'm extremely comfortable in After Effects. I, even if I don't know how to do something in After Effects, I know it well enough that all I need to do is see a couple little things from a tutorial and, and I'm off and running. Being that comfortable with After Effects ha has made me, that that was the biggest intimidating factor for me making this type of switch is knowing where, I know, I know how to do this thing in After Effects. How can I do this as easily in something else? And what I found is just like with all these other things, I, I'm replacing it After Effects with a few different tools. And right now, my main two tools for replacing After Effects are just using doing my basic motion graphics within the video editor, whether it's Caden Live or Lightworks, and then combining that with Blender. I've used Blender for a long time, but I went through a phase where I didn't use it and I felt like a beginner again as I started picking it up recently. I'm getting more comfortable and I feel like I'm going to get to that point in Blender where I was with After Effects, where Blender is going to be just, it's going to feel like home when I open it up to do motion graphics. Now, obviously Blender can do a lot more with mo a lot more than motion graphics. And a lot, with, with these tools I'm mentioning, Blender, I'm doing some stuff in Lightworks and then we're going to talk about Resolve, but you're, be, you're going to be able to do visual effects, motion graphics, 3D, all kinds of things like that. So Blender is going to be one of the big tools I'm relying on for motion graphics. So if you're replacing After Effects, Blender, your your video editor, also 
resolve itself, which includes fusion. If you are heavy in visual effects and motion graphics and things like that, and you can run resolve, it's worth considering paying that studio price to be able to run fusion. And then that way you're not really skipping a beat in terms of professional grade graphics tools. Now, granted, again, Blender is amazing and Blender probably can do everything you need it to do. It's just a matter of learning how to do it. And that's what I'm doing currently. So Blender, Lightworks, Resolve are on my list to, of tools to replace After Effects. The last and final one is photography related and that's Lightroom. I'm gonna list two options to replace Lightroom, Darktable and Raw Therapy. But the reality is for me, I've fallen in love with Darktable and I don't need anything else. For me, Darktable has been the best replacement out of this whole list in terms of the features I use. It's been a nearly one-to-one -one replacement. The, the thing I've talked about before, the thing I'm still trying to figure out is my perfect printing workflow. I have a, I have a, I have a professional Epson photo printer. Figuring out that workflow is something I'm still working on. Before the print aspect of it, from importing to editing to organizing, all these things, Darktable knocks it out of the park. And really, I couldn't ask for much more. I was really, really happy learning how powerful and fast Light, I mean, Darktable is. So if you're replacing Lightroom, look at Raw Therapy, look at Darktable, and you can decide between the two. And there might be others out there, but these are the two most popular ones because you're talking about two apps that can do powerful cataloging and editing and all of these kind of things. So look at Darktable and Raw Therapy for your Lightroom replacement. Making the transition to Linux and free and open source software can be frustrating, but if you prepare beforehand, you start learning some of these pieces of software, download them on your Mac or PC, on your Windows PC, and start learning Inkscape and GIMP and Krita and Caden Live and, and, and Lightworks and Darktable and all these things. Start learning these pieces of software and Blender. Start learning all these pieces of software. Get comfortable. When you make, if you make the switch to Linux, you're going to be off and running. Once you're in the operating system and your operating system stable, the biggest thing is the tools you need to use to create your work. And you can get started on learning those right now. There's probably others for each of these categories that I should add to the list. I know the video editing list is long and I need to do a deep dive on video editing so you guys know why I didn't choose this software or that software. And we will. Because one, for example, Blender has already been, has been updating their video tools so fast I can't, I haven't been able to keep up and that's a good thing. So we're going to do a deep dive into video editing on Linux soon. But for now, download these tools, start learning them, and that helps make your transition easier. If your goal is to leave the Adobe world, you can start this now, no matter what operating system you're using. I appreciate every one of my subscribers. I gained a lot from the DistroTube shout out. So shout out to DistroTube, shout out to everyone who found me from that shout out. And thank you for being here. And I will talk to you soon.